Welcome to video number 12. This one might sound and look a little different because I got some new equipment. I uh, have a, a sketch pad connected to my computer and I'm going to try and do everything on screen in paint and <clears throat> we'll see how that goes. And also I decided to shift gears and do a little bit of transistor circuit analysis uh, uh, because that's one of my favorite topics and uh, just kind of breaks up the, the monotony a little bit. So what we're going to do today is determine the Q point for this transistor. The Q point is the DC operating point. Uh, Q means quiescent or quiet, that is no signal conditions. Uh, we indicate that by just appending a Q onto IC and VCE. Uh, when we're establishing a Q point, what we're doing is getting the transistor set up to do something useful, uh, probably to be used as an amplifier. But in order to work as an amplifier, we have to set the transistor up or bias it up, and that's what we're doing here. Okay, this is a base biased NPN transistor. We say it's base biased because I have a distinct base voltage V sub BB biasing it up. The collector supply voltage is not shown explicitly, but we assume that this node is connected to another battery or DC source just like VVB. Uh, the transistor is going to be modeled with this relatively simple behavioral model over here. There are much more complicated models that uh, are used, but this one is sufficient for 99% of the applications we'll deal with. Uh, we're going to treat the collector base junction as a dependent current source. That is, the collector current is equal to beta times the base current. The uh, base emitter junction is treated just like a normal PN junction diode. Now, notice that the collector current and base current flow together and combine to go out the emitter terminal. So we can write this as an equation as I sub E equals IB plus IC. That is, the emitter current is the sum of collector and base currents. That's going to be important in another few seconds here. Now, let's think about the transistor itself for a minute. In an application like this, it's probably going to be a typical low power general purpose transistor like a uh, 2N3904 or a 2N2222 or something similar. Uh, these transistors have a beta that can vary all over the place, but typically the beta is going to range from a high of maybe 300 to a low of maybe 50. I like to approximate the beta generally as being about 100. Now that's a conservative estimate, but it makes the math easier. It, you know, it's much easier to divide by 100 or multiply by 100, and it is conservative. So it kind of works in our favor, and it's close enough almost all the time. So with that in mind, let's come back down and look at this equation that says emitter current is base current plus collector current. If the collector current is at least 100 times bigger than the base current, we can pretty much ignore the base current and say that the emitter current is approximately equal to the collector current. And that will introduce less than a 1% error if our beta is 100 or larger. So we're going to use this approximation to make the algebra simpler when we do our analysis over here. Okay. Now, let me write that down. The error is typically less than 1% if we use this approximation. All right, so let's come over here and look at what we've got to figure out. All right, what we want to know is the collector current, and then we can figure out the uh, collector to emitter voltage, but apparently we need to find the base current first. Now, we really don't care about the base current. It's a nuisance, 
but let's go ahead and figure it out and that'll help us to find the things that we're really uh, worried about. All right, so to find the base current, we're going to do an application of Kirchhoff's voltage law around this loop. We're going to assume that all clockwise pointing uh, voltage sensing arrows are positive and all counterclockwise arrows are negative. So we've got VBB working up here. We get a drop across this resistor IB times RB. Uh, we've got our base emitter voltage VBE. And over here, we've got a drop equal to IC times RE. Remember, we're assuming that IE and IC are about the same, so we can write this. All right, collecting all of this stuff and writing the KVL equation, we get 0 equals VBB minus IB times RB minus VBE minus IC times RE. Okay, I'm going to add VBE and subtract VBB from both sides of the equation to move them on to the left side. And that gives me minus VBB plus VBE equals negative IB times RB minus IC times RE. Now, I've got a lot of negative signs in these equations, and to make it look prettier, I'm going to multiply both sides by negative 1, and that will get rid of a lot of this negativity, right? we got enough negativity going around. We don't need any more here. So, multiplying both sides by negative 1, we get VBB minus VBE equals IB times RB plus IC times RE. All right, now the next step, I'm going to substitute beta times IB for IC. Remember, we've got that fundamental relationship over here, IC equals beta times IB. So let's go ahead and use that and rewrite this as IB times RB plus beta times IB times RE. Okay, we're just substituting beta times IB for IC. Okay, the next step, I'm going to factor the base current out of these two terms, and that leaves me with VBB minus VBE equals IB times the quantity RB plus beta times RE. Finally, I'm going to divide both sides by this factor in parentheses, giving me an equation for base current. And that is the base current is equal to VBB minus VBE divided by RB plus beta times RE. Now, before we move on, I want to point something out about this. It's really cool. And that is when we're looking at the transistor from the perspective of, you know, this voltage source looking into the base. Well, yeah, we see the base resistor, but notice that the emitter resistor looks beta times larger. So as a general rule, when you're looking into the base of a transistor, resistances in the emitter appear beta times larger. That's a really useful fact that we, you know, put in your back pocket to use later on when we're doing uh, circuit analysis because that's a very important uh, phenomena. All right, but anyway, getting back to this, as I said before, I don't care about the base current. It's really just a nuisance. What I care about is collector current. But remember, beta times IB is equal to IC. So if I multiply this side by beta and this side by beta, I've got the collector current. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, multiplying through, doing a little bit of algebra, and I'm out of room. I'm just going to uh, give you the result here. The collector current, and 
let's throw the Q back in there because we are finding the Q point value, is equal to VBB minus VBE divided by RB over beta plus RE. So there we have an equation that tells us the collector current for this circuit. Next thing we want to do is find VCE. Uh, before we do that, let's clear some of this stuff out of here, make some room. And uh, there we go. Good enough. All right. To find VCE, we're going to do KVL down this side of the circuit, which is really pretty straightforward. Um, notice we've got a drop on the collector resistor that's equal to ICQ times RC. And if we write the KVL equation for this thing, we've got zero equals VCC minus ICQ times RC minus VCEQ minus ICQ times RE. Just throwing the Q down on here, right? All right, and we're after VCEQ, so I'm just going to add it to both sides, and we get VCE at the Q point equals VCC minus ICQ times RC minus ICQ times RE. And we factor ICQ out of these two terms. We end up with VCEQ equals VCC minus ICQ times RC plus RE. And there are our two equations for the Q point. Now, I know this is my chicken scratch, so I actually uh, put these down here very nice uh, form so that we can see them in all their glory, not the way I have it uh, drawn. So there we go. These are my equations for collector current and VCE at the Q point. All right, that's it for today's video. Um, I think in the next video, uh, we'll do some analysis example problems using uh, all this information and maybe do a few measurements on real transistors or some piece by simulations and uh, we'll go from there. All right, but thanks for listening. Uh, again, give me some feedback, whatever you think could be improved or changed and I will gladly try and implement those uh, corrections. But I will see you next time.